Hey guys, it has been a long time since I've brought you back out into the garden to show you what is happening. I am so sorry about that, but the weather here has been absolutely crazy over the last couple of weeks and it has just been raining so much and I ha just haven't had the opportunity to come out and show you what's been happening in the garden. There have been lots of frustrations and lots of um, lots of good rewarding things happening in the garden as well. Um, so much rain brings so many other little problems to the garden like all the little munchy critters like the grasshoppers and the aphids and all that sort of stuff come into the garden in in larger amounts when it's when it's so wet it's just the perfect conditions for them so I've had quite a few downs but I've also had a few ups and a lot of different surprises and stuff in the garden so how about I take you for a quick walk around and I can show you an update on what's happening so before we go for this walk behind me is the grapevine the pink Iona it is still covered in grapes and I'm really hoping that the possum doesn't find doesn't find it and I actually get some grapes out of it. That's been another problem that I've had here recently is my guard dog Ace. He hasn't he doesn't really like getting his little paws wet when it's raining. So he hasn't actually been keeping the native wildlife out of my garden. So I have had quite a bit of theft from from the possums and and other other things like I, I have seen a, I have seen a wild turkey in the garden as well and I I shoot that out but um, the possums tend to come in the evenings and um, they stole all of my donut peaches this year so I didn't even get one single donut peach so I'm really sad about that but all right let's let's pick up and go for a bit of a walk and see how much everything has actually grown because that is the one good part about all this rain is everything is just growing and just loving all the water and then the sunshine that goes with it when the sun eventually comes out so the last few days it has actually been really nice here very hot and steamy but um, the sun's been out and we've just been getting little showers in the evening which is great which is a gardener's delight is to have showers in the evening to water the garden and then during the day the sun shines so everything can grow and dry out and it, it just be productive and nice so hopefully that sort of weather keeps up here but we'll just wait and see what this season brings so I'm actually at the moment sitting down on my little um, chair setting that I got for birthday month and these are the um, the zucchinis these are the Lebanese ones and they are just dying off and looking very except for this one this one's actually looking okay but they haven't been really liking all the rain it, it's just a bit too wet for them um, so these ones have been uh, these um, blackjacks they've been struggling a little bit but I noticed over here I actually have a zucchini on it and and some some stuff coming through so I um I really look forward to them coming on because we have been a bit low on zucchinis now as you can see all my ginger along the fence line here is just it's it's really it's really coming forward and I don't know if you remember if you go back on a few garden episodes I showed you how to plant turmeric and it's the same planting the ginger well the turmeric has shot up and so that's that's going to grow nicely there I probably will dig that one out at the end of this season just because it's quite close to the to the ginger and I will need some more turmeric come the end of the season and I've got a whole heap more turmeric over here so I have stacks of turmeric to to dig up some and that probably wasn't the most ideal place to to put it but it was the perfect spot at the time if we just back up here you can see on the dragon fruit we have some dragon fruits and flowers I've had a few a few dragon fruits set and I've got another one just down in here so 
I'm pretty sure that this season I'm going to get a nice bountiful amount of red dragon fruits off this. I actually really love drying the red dragon fruit. It it has such a nice flavour to it. So when we have too much, instead of freezing it, I tend to dry it and then it can just be shelf stable in the cupboard for however long we want um, until we want to eat it. Matt's chilies over here, they are amazing. They are growing so much. They are huge. And I'll have to take you around to this other side and show you all of these new chilies that are coming through. Can you guys see all of them? This is just loaded with green chilies and they will turn red. I, I know I said in a couple of videos ago that I really need to come out and pick some green chilies and make a green green curry paste. Um, I have other ones down in here that are starting to turn colour. So um, Matt is going to have a lot of chilli sauce making coming up in the future. Matt has been making a fermented chilli sauce. So he's been fermenting the chilies um, for, I think he's been doing it for three months in the ferment and then making a chilli sauce from it. So I'm not too sure what he's got planned for all these chilies. This is actually his bed and obviously because it's full of all of his chilies. So I'll leave I'll leave that section up to Matt. I don't I don't do the chilies he does. So I won't even attempt to predict what he's going to do with them except I know he's going to make chili sauce. While we're here near the chili bed, I want to show you the um, pineapple tomato. I am finally got some fruit on it and I've got one fruit that's just starting to change color. I am so excited to to taste this one. I've never tasted it before. I've only seen it in a um in one of my clients' gardens and I'm I'm super excited to to taste it and I'm so happy that it's it's come through for us and it's actually got quite a few tomatoes on it. So see that it's just starting to just starting to change colour. You can tell because this one here hasn't started changing it. It's very green and this one's got the yellow yellow patch to it so um, I'll keep a very close eye on that and um, hopefully pick it within the next couple of days and next to it is this like the Sakata um, melon um, it's it's really climbing and going gangbusters and it, it's starting to it's starting to fruit and I, I have a couple of I have a couple of bigger fruits down here so you can see that one and there's another there's another bigger fruit over here somewhere yeah down in there and over there um one of the worst parts about this time of the year is the um the fruit fly and the damage that the fruit fly does to a lot of my crop i'm it the fruit fly has pierced some of this um some of the melons on this one um, it's destroyed a couple of my tomatoes already, my, my black Russian tomatoes. So I haven't, even though a couple have become ripe, they were just infested with fruit fly. I really need to find a way to to manage to manage the fruit fly. It's I just I just don't know what to do. If you guys have any ideas, suggestions, comments, please leave them down in the um, in the comments below. I would love to hear what you're doing for fruit flies if you're growing your own garden. I'm just I'm just grinning and bearing it at the moment and just saying, well, I'm learning. I'm I'm doing the best I can right now and and things will get better every year. Every year that I keep moving forward, things will get better and it'll become easier and easier to manage these things and, and to be able to get a good, fulfilling crop. Even if that means maybe next year, I'm gonna to have to buy a lot of little bags that I can put over all the individual fruits once they've been pollinated and fertilized. Um, so that the fruit fly can't get it. I'm just not too sure at this point. Um, it has got me down a little bit, but I'm still getting so much out of the garden. So 
It really shouldn't get me down because this garden is just being so productive and the volunteers that are coming up because of all the rain. It's just, it's so magical and I'm, I'm really loving it. I have to show you the jalapenos over here and then also the um, candy, candy cane capsicums. We have got so many jalapenos off these two plants. It has been phenomenal. Now this here is a volunteer tomato. I'm going to assume that it's just a cherry tomato of some description. And I've got another one over here. So um, I'll just let them grow up the trellis and see what happens. I planted um, some long white um, cucumbers down here the other day hoping that they would they would germinate I'm not holding out too much hope because the last time I planted them I'll show you that a little later in the clip the last time I planted them we'll get to that I have a volunteer wongbok has just has just come up so and another one just over there that's been a little bit insect eaten but it's okay here we have a voluntary I'm not too sure what it is yet, but a voluntary something. I'll just let it climb up here and we will find out what it is. I'm thinking maybe it's a rock melon or a melon of some description. But look, look at how many, how many capsicums I have happening on this. And we have been picking and eating the capsicums. So these are just... So the weather is, the, the rain is making a lot produce and, and shine. I've got a voluntary, um, maybe a chili, could be a capsicum. I'll just let it grow and see what happens. I thought I'd just, while I was near the capsicums and the, the chilies, I would just bring you to the back of the aquaponics. Now this is um, the black Russian tomato that I'm not having a huge amount of success. I've um, picked two from here, but like I said earlier, they both had a whole heap of fruit fly in it. Same with the cucumber that was next door. It's had a cucumber on it. See, as you can see, this, that there, that's got fruit fly in it. It's just, I'll bag that up and throw it in the bin accordingly so that we don't end up with more fruit fly around. As, as we move over a bit, I've got a couple more up here. Um, but I think, I think the possum's getting to this here as well because Ace hasn't really been on the ball and making sure that <laughs> it doesn't come in the yard. So we'll, we'll just see how this all goes and I'll keep giving you updates and, and letting you know. All right, I'm back out near the jalapenos and the... Um, candy cane capsicum and right next to this bed <gasps> there's some beautiful beautiful sunflowers there's a little bit old this one this one came out a little while ago so it's it's actually at the older stage and it's starting to lose its petals but it's had the bees in and I don't know if you can see it's got the ants on it there and a beautiful beautiful praying mantis this one here has only just come out in the last few days but how lovely is that I'll be saving these seeds I'm not too sure whether these seeds are going to be true to what the parent plant is um, but I'll save the seeds and we'll plant them and we'll find out my tomatoes over here are actually going not too bad I need to probably stake them up a bit more um, but once again, with all the weather, they are starting to get some some wilt and some and some fungal damage on the leaves. So I'm not, I'm not too sure how how the tomatoes will fare from now on in. Some of them are doing really well, like this plant. This plant seems to be doing really well, and it's got some really nice fruit on it. So we'll just keep an eye on it and see how it goes and and fingers crossed i get i get some good some good food out of it now i don't know if you guys remember but the back at the beginning of this season i um moved some 
some volunteers and put them up on this trellis and I was thinking it was cucumbers. Guys, it's not cucumbers. They're not cucumbers at all. Um, I think, I think they're rock melons. So not all is lost. So now I appear that I have a thing of rock melons going up here and the ones over in this bed over here, they appear to be rock melons as well. So I was slightly wrong, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's something productive and I can use it and we love rock melons, so they won't go to waste. I have also, from these strawberries along here, I have been getting so many strawberries. I have frozen so many. I've got a ginormous big bag of frozen strawberries and I've eaten at least that amount, if not more. So the strawberries have been extremely productive. My vision of passion fruit growing over, over this trellis here is starting to come into fruition. Guys, look at that. Look at the passion fruit on it and how much the vine has taken over. You're looking at it taking over a good half of, of this trellis. So I'm, I'm really excited because it's the vision that I had in my head is actually starting to come to life. I didn't really envision that the passion fruit, the avocado and the fig were all going to be mingled together. That wasn't quite my vision, but they seem to be doing really well all together as well. So I'm going to leave that. I will, at the end of this season, cut that fig down, um, cut it back a bit and encourage it to grow out this way more rather than towards the trellis. Um, so I'll, I'll do that and I'll probably give the avocado a little bit of a trim as well and just be more conscious of making the passion fruit come more this way so that so that the avocado tree actually has a little bit more space to grow. This bed here the kale that is just it's just been eaten and chomped and munched and it's it's really nothing flash it it actually needs to come out but all of these tricolour capsicums that I planted from seed, they are starting to, they're starting to produce. Um, but I, like I said earlier, there's little lots of munchy, crunchy critters happening around here at the moment. So they're, they're just getting into everything. Oh, that one came off pretty easily. So yeah, see, it's, it's been munched on already. Um, I have some nice big ones coming coming through so I might go around and pick some of the bigger ones and just just eat them green and not wait for them to change color over here the trocos are starting to take over that trellis the watermelon that I planted out the back that's doing all right but ace has been running through the garden there so we'll just we'll just have to see what happens the bees are loving the um, basil that's coming into flower everywhere and I think if I go over here you'll be able to see the bees look at that they are just having a ball and while I'm on the topic of bees something really exciting happened last week I got another beehive <laughs> Yes, now I have two beehives. Um, I will start doing some videos of checking the bees and extracting the honey and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm super excited. I now have two hives. Ultimately, I think I want maybe three, but we'll just, we'll just work on two at the moment and see where we go. And for Christmas, um, Matt and I are buying each other a native beehive so I'll be able to bring you on that experience as well. So these are a few things that we've been wanting to do for ages and we're finally getting around and 
are able to to get these different bees and the and the other beehive and to be able to maintain them properly um, and have the time to maintain them so i'm super excited about that um, it's going to change the production of this garden significantly with having the native bees and extra honeybees around for pollination and and also to to deter other um, non-beneficial insects so I'm starting to build up um, my knowledge and and what I plant in the garden that's going to flower and flower edible flowers and and all of that sort of stuff so I'm really hoping to change the dynamics of this garden I still want it all to be edible um, but I'm I'm learning and I'm, I'm bringing all these different ideas to fruition and as we move along and they're successful I'll show you them so now that we're down this end of the garden I want to show you guys the West Indian gherkin it is bizarre let's flip you around and show you can you guys see in there look at that this is a West Indian gherkin. It is prickly. And as you can see, these brown dots, that's where the fruit fly have attacked this gherkin. I've left it on so that I could show you, but I'm gonna have to, at some point, I'm gonna have to take it off before they become, before the larvae become fruit flies to damage any more of my crop. But how, how wicked is that? And now what I did think was my um, long white cucumbers. They're actually just cucumelons or mouse melons, which I was afraid they were going to be. So I'm not too sure that maybe that seed packet was not viable what I bought or what was in the seed packet was the wrong seeds. I really don't know, but a little bit disappointed that I don't have long white cucumbers, but I have some sort of a cucumber, so it's it's not all bad. As you can see over here, these golden zucchinis are really struggling with the amount of water that we've had. Zucchinis don't like to be too wet, so so they are, they are having a hard time. They like the sun, but in saying that, I've still got a massive zucchini on here, which once again has been um, been bitten by, stung by fruit fly. But at least with the zucchini, I can cut that out and use all of the others. So I am getting to use the zucchinis, which is great. The echinacea over here, which is getting covered by this mouse melon or cucumber melon. I've had one, one flower which has been absolutely beautiful. I'm letting that go to seed and I'm going to spread that all around the garden. But I've got some more buds coming out. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to, can't wait till they all go to seed and I will be spreading this echinacea all throughout the garden. Once they've gone to seed, I am just going to scatter them all around the garden so that I have beautiful echinaceas popping up everywhere. And just to get this abundant amount of flowers and and beauty that is that is also edible around the garden for the bees and and all of that so I'm I am so super excited for this next step even though right now this garden is causing a little bit of frustration because of the fruit fly and and because the weather has been so wet that there's some things that haven't that are just not doing very well and there's so many munchy insects around um, but but that's a part of gardening and I've just got to accept that as I go through this journey I will learn more things and the beneficial insects will be here in in a bigger abundance so it'll take over from the non-beneficial insects that seem to be eating everything and with luck I'll be able to find a really good fruit fly solution so that so that I don't have so much damage to my goods in the garden now before I go I do want to show you guys this because I got a little bit excited and if you you follow me on social media you would have seen it as well 
I've got a bunch of bananas coming on. It's so good. I haven't had a, banana, a bunch of bananas from my banana plants. Um, I think I got one bunch last year and most of the bunches that I got were from next door because they don't eat the bananas. So they gave them to me, which was fantastic. I ended up with like four bunches from them. So it was absolutely brilliant. Um, as I said earlier, the possum came along and ate all of my donut peaches, but I don't know if you can see behind me, the Barbados cherry is, is pumping out the fruit right now. So I'm going to make the most of those fruits instead of the uh, donut peach and, and get in and eat them. Um, they do have three small seeds in the middle, so you've kind of got to be a little bit careful when you eat them, but they are so delicious. They're not too tart, and they're just, they're kind of refreshing and perfect. So, with everything that's going on in the garden, and there being failures, and successes as well, because I've still got lots of beetroots and spinaches and, and greens and all that sort of stuff coming through, we just need to keep flowing with the season and and enjoying what we have and learning from from the mishaps that we have as well so guys on that note i'm going to say goodbye until next time so big hugs until next time guys